All right, today is the day, and as you can see, things are a little different. Rather than hiding behind the workbench, I'm out here in the welding shop. Have the subframe and engine differential all sitting here in front of me. The basic subframe is welded together, at least the rear one, front one coming. But got it here, starting to fit some components together, building some engine motor mounts and differential mounts. And once I get those complete and things tied into place with those major components, then it'll be a matter of starting to put on brackets, you know, brackets over there for the turbochargers. And once the turbochargers are on, we can bring the exhaust system back. Um, pick up points for all the suspension to start getting put on. Anyway, good excitement and some changes and coming to the mechanical side rather than always working on the body. Just focused a lot of the last videos on the body work and there's still some of that going on. In fact, in this video, we going to show a little bit of the, taking the mold off the bonnet. But here are the mechanicals, rear subframe. Once we get the front subframe together, we've also got all the connections in between there. Building belt housings for the transmission, connections through to the transfer case and on up to the front differential. And speaking of that, I had a viewer, Melissa, who asked me some questions in one of the last videos about how the powertrain system was going to work for the all-wheel drive. And as I was responding to her, I started looking into things and I opened the box that has the transfer case in it and somehow came to the realization that we're going to have a problem. In using that transfer case in reverse, the bias was going to be completely wrong and I had not calculated that into the whole equation of this design. And it was going to end up 60% of the transfer to the front wheels rather than to the rear wheels. So I had to look into that some more. I'm glad she brought that up and had me think about it again before I got to doing those things. But it's gonna take me back a little bit to actually building my own transfer case. And we'll show you a little bit about that in this video. Well, let's not just talk about it. Let's go take a look and see what we've done. Subframe was made out of two inch square tubing of a couple of very thicknesses with some diagonal bracing to allow for the personal rigidity in there. And once the tubing's all cut, I've been a uh, bird mouth cutting it, or cutting it so they will fit together. Just using a hole saw, using a little lubrication and cooling here to keep my saws lasting longer. Once those are uh, cut and uh, cleaned up, put a little bevel on them to take the weld and improve the penetration. They are uh, put together this is a selection of all the tubing made for the front and the rear subframes. Getting ready to uh, lay it out here on the floor. Of course, uh, no jig at this point because this is, of course, a prototype. So once the prototype's been in action for a while and we can see if there are any failures or stresses in places, we can adjust the subframe. That's when a jig would be created. But at this point, it's just a matter of uh, measuring, checking, measuring, checking making sure everything's in alignment and square. Once you've got them into the point where things are where they're supposed to be according to the drawings, time to tack weld them in place. One last check. Just tacking them in place with a MIG welder. And we'll move to TIG welder once the pieces are all joined together with just a tack. A little warmer day, moved on to TIG welding. Love TIG welding in the fact that it does not produce all the splatter and the heat that the MIG welder does. So it's kind of going to sit back and relax and do some TIG welding because there's a lot of it. Once I had the subframe assembled together, I found the cherry picker would not pick the engine out of this engine stand, so I had to resort to using the lift. Just to put a beam across the lift and uh, attach it to the engine. This way I could, and it works pretty nicely to be able to lift the engine up and down at minute increments. Very nice to get the engine off of the stand. You never know about these stands. They seem like they're sturdy. But that engine seems to wobble on there. That cast iron block is pretty heavy as well, so 
The one downfall of the JZ engines is the cast iron block, but also one of the benefits, the strength of that cast iron. So anyway, lowering that engine into position, time to get it aligned as accurately as possible. It has a two and a half inch offset off of center. So accounting for that, once it's in place, I start building engine mounts out of templates, just a heavy cardstock. Cut them into position as you go, trim and fit. Once you get it close to what you think it's gonna be, just a matter of uh, taping the parts together to make the form of this engine mount in this case. Once that's done, lay it out on a piece of sheet metal. Again, this is quarter inch chromoly sheeting. Plenty strong to handle just about anything you can do with a quarter inch chromoly plate. Of course, it'd been nice to have all these parts plasma cut by a machine or laser cut. But again, working on a prototype and to make things go faster, you don't want to spend the time waiting for parts from the Mac vendor. After you've got those parts cut out, see this one's got a bend in it. Trying to fit them into place. Fit them. Of course, this is made out of a couple of different pieces, three pieces for this engine mount. Try them in position. Once you got them in position, tack weld them. Up there, tack weld it. I can take them off and bring them over to the bench and finish TIG welding them. And of course, once these mounts are uh, completed, time to go back to the subframe. And weld them in place, or at least tack them in place. Moved on from the engine mounts, now I'm creating the template for the differential mount. This is also going to be out of a quarter inch plate. This much plate adds a lot of weight, but of course there's going to be a lot of torsional loads on this uh, differential mounted back here on the subframe. There are the templates tested in place, seem to be good. And of course, one of the motor mounts is actually a flange that the bell will hook to. This is the bell mount off the original transmission that came on the JZ, just using it as a template to match up with the bolt pattern on that JZ engine. Once I get that ring, I'll extend the flanges on the side because this plate is actually gonna extend off to the left and the right check it here is the engine out of the corvette that we're going to be using making sure that the width's right according to the heights also of the subframe then mark it for the wings that will come up with this uh, flange and have some urethane bushings installed in them to be bolted to the motor mounts and here is that flange built you can see the steel plates mounted to the brackets. And this is a motor mount on the left side of the engine. Notice it's got a nice big arch because the drive shaft will be coming. There'll be a bearing mounted right here. We'll travel through to the differential there. There's the mounts for the differential, tack weld in place. The motor mount's tacked in place and it's ready to go take welding. So what does it mean to have all this engine and subframe built? What it means is that now that I have it all in place, I can put the turbochargers in place, the mufflers, the water pump. I've got vacuum lines, I've got fuel lines, and of course, I've got electrical. The wiring harness can now be built because I know the measurements and the distances, and I've got electrical, and I have got lots of electrical to do, and more electrical. And that's what we want. Well, as you can see, this video jumps around a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and that's the way things have gone in the last few months with a bunch of big projects in my life. In fact, I've got one more coming up. It's going to take me two or three weeks of doing solid labor. And once that's done, then I'll be able to really focus back on this project. And hopefully the videos then, and I keep saying that, but hopefully the videos then will be a little more consistent and maybe possibly even once a week if I can get to that point. So make sure you go down and subscribe, ring the little bell if you want to get notifications when those videos become available. Well, glad you stopped by this time and hope you come back again. Anyway, thanks for watching.